They are not going to work for the good of the Imperials. Have you seen how the Imperial City looks like, by the way? Uh, no. I have heard that some parts of the city are unrecognizable. You mean that they destroy the Empire from its core? They undermine it. But what's going on with the Imperials? Why don't they do something about it? Because the Empire is 109% archified. What does that mean? Every aspect of Imperial culture is submerged in Orc effluent. The Empire itself is a veritable Neo-Alessian Empire. A crumbling, failed state held hostage by roaming troops of savage guerrilla orc rapists. Wait, you said that it's the Red Guard's influence on their culture. When which... I say orc, that includes the Red Guards too. But you also said that the High Elves are the ones who influence their politics. When and... I say orc, that includes them too, and don't. But they're completely different from each other. Why would you say orcs? When, when I say they're... orc, that includes them too. Okay, I get it. Orc pandering dictates all of Imperial politics that does not cow to Alinor. A dynamic that has become the dirge of the Imperials' mortifying, collapsing grotto of depravity. After some ritual mutilation is completed, the Max Potioned, Skuma Ravaged, mid-witted Imperial is trained to mimic the simian antics of Orcs. Be it theatrical productions, books, advertising, news, songs, or illusions, all Imperial entertainment is replete and gushing with vomitous orc platitudes and their drunken baboonery. Imperial orcs who anywhere else in the world would, by default, be classified as subfunctional in the Empire are lavished with exorbitant riches, and for little more than the spastic flailing of their gangly appendages, to the chatter of schoolyard limericks laced with pigeon profanity. Orcs' primitive tribal chants, dubbed battle songs, near unintelligible low IQ drivel that glorifies abuse, rape, and mass murder, are euphemized as music. Afforded imperial anthem status and performed everywhere from churches to military parades. Even the imperial diet is comprised of insalubrious, orcified slop soused in silos of salt and sugar, which the orc ironically believes to be seasoning. Poisons, which are inedible for any living thing that is not either an obese imperial or orc. Orcs' antisocial, anti-civil, thug culture has supplanted the imperial constitution, and now underpins the foundation of its so-called order. Wow, man, this is some serious... Do not interrupt me. I haven't finished yet. Okay. The mantra, VOC, standing for best orc companion, is a fundamentalist prayer uttered by every halitosis-infused imperial breath. From womb to tomb, in a daedric fashion, Imperial women are inculcated and then indentured as bestial nut dumpsters for concupiscent, vampirism-addled orcs, who they copulate with to produce hideous, grotesque horrors, the likes of which are beyond even Dedrick Prince's nightmares. Systematic, multi-generational demoralization and abject dumbing down has left the Imperial utterly bereft of all agency and nothing but the pathological compulsion for obsequious groveling at the splayed simian paws of its orc warriors. The collective crooked back of imperial society holds aloft its orc's litter, high above its founding fathers, and even above its beloved emperors. Nary a moment passes in the woebegone life of a piteous, pathetic imperial where it is not submerged up to its beady, bovine eyeballs in thick, fetid orc filth. I'm not sure that this is the best way or to... Or the Imperial Sun rises with the Septim Dynasty and sets with its orcs. I don't know, man. Is it really that bad? Yes, Bagoth Vemin told us that we can ask any Imperial about the Imperial City, and the response will be the same. The Emperor needs to do something about the Red Guards playing the knockout game on Imperials who dare to walk the streets of their own towns and cities. Entire blocks of the Imperial City aren't even patrolled by the Watch due to the levels of violence. That sounds very serious. It is very serious. So this Vemin dude is very well informed when it comes to things like these. No, not necessarily. How did he know it then? And Enwa wanted to take his sunder and tried to talk him to death, but he was too. The guy too. tried to talk him to death. 
Yeah, he was speaking about the Imperial's current situation, expecting de Goth Vim and to die of boredom. But he enjoyed the stories. Are you sure that he didn't make up the stories? No, he saw the truth in the eyes. And what happened to him? I don't know, but believe me, you don't want to take the sunder from Dagoth Vemin. He likes it. All right, but what's this sunder thing you're talking about? The sunder is a legendary hammer of divine mass, and Dagoth Vemin is really into it. Is he, like, emotionally attached to it or something? He likes the sunder with it. It's called the sunder for a reason. And what else did he tell about the Imperials? He mostly talked about the Imperial Red Guards living in the outskirts of the Imperial City, only visiting the other parts to ask for spare septums while having Daedric boots on their feet. Aren't those boots expensive? The quality ones are very expensive. Maybe they stole them or something? Oh, come on, Joe. What are you talking about? I mean, it's just a possibility, you know. They've got them from Wizard Khalifa. Wizard Khalifa? Yes, he's known as an entertainer, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. But in the real world, he is just a skooma dealer and the son of the most notorious crime lord, who has also happened to be the head of organized crime in Tamriel. So it's possible that his generosity and their family's business are somehow connected to each other in a way which... No. Those Daedric boots were considered junk. It would have cost him a fortune to ship the trash elsewhere, so he gave them away instead. At least they've got some boots. At least. And when it comes to this family, how well known are they? They're very well known. What about their deals? The organized crime? They are not too secretive about their businesses. So, no one cares about them? Of course not. The Imperials are too busy pampering their orcs. Don't tell me that the people there never try to do something about it. There are more than two million crossbows in private hands in the Empire, and none of them will be used. Ever. Wow, man. I thought the crossbow laws were way stricter. They are sufficiently strict. Okay, but there are more than two million crossbows in private hands. That's a lot of crossbows. We are talking about the legally owned ones. You know, the ones for home defense purposes only? Yeah, I get it. But if you had to make an assumption on how many crossbows might be out there without a permit or... I have no idea, and I'm not making assumptions about it. After the last two major wars, so much equipment vanished that if I add together the swords, maces, axes, bows, and arrows, Someone in Tamriel has enough weaponry to arm a 40,000-strong army. And who might have those weapons now? Bandits, mostly. Are they considered to be uh, a great threat because of this? No, luckily they're not smart enough to organize themselves. You are telling me that they can't get together and make plans in order to do something. They are too stupid to do anything productive or remotely complicated. It's as simple as that. But why would they hold so many crossbows for home defense purposes if there are no considerable threats out there? There are many, many considerable threats out there. Can you tell me one? The orcs. Okay, but so many people get hurt on a monthly basis by crossbow-wielding maniacs who are not supposed to have one. And just to bring up an example, I'm sure you've heard about the case which happened a few weeks ago when a student from the Arcane University used the family crossbow Joe, he was too. mentally handicapped and his parents didn't lock up the crossbow. They were supposed to put it in a place where he couldn't get his hands on it. I don't think that blaming the parents for his actions is the right thing to do in this case. But why? He planned ahead and knew that those students had no chance against him because... They were mages. Seriously flawed and awful mages, but they had the ability to... And there was to... no security or anything to protect the place, which is incredible to me. There was a security measure. Really? Yes, the Imperial Council passed a regulation a couple of years ago which cost the Empire millions of septums and achieved nothing. What are you talking about? They placed signs everywhere saying no crossbow area and crossbow restricted area. And I guess those signs are not very useful when it comes Joe, to- Joe, those signs are not stopping anyone. They had one in the Arcane University and that was not- I don't even know what they expected from those signs. Yeah, I know. It's like- Oh, look, I'm retarded and took this crossbow from my parents' locker to crossbow up to school. Wait, what's this? A sign saying I can't bring my crossbow to school? Fuck. Man, now I have to forget about the plan. Go home and beat my meat to anime girls all day long. I get your point, but I think that they should just take the crossbows from those who don't need them. Taking away the legally owned crossbows won't lead to any good. Why? Throughout history, the disarmament of the general population was always the precursor to conquest, and it was not the disarmed who conquered the others. 
maybe you've got a point, but this is This is, is more... a sound argument with real premises and a true conclusion. Okay, but so many people get hurt every year because of those crossbows, and I want It's to... not the crossbow, but the Enwa who uses it. And there are rules regarding how you have to keep them locked up so no All one All can... I want to know is, what would you do if you had the regulatory power to stop these cases? Well, I'm pretty confident that they won't be shot dead again, so I think we have this one covered.